Expo 86. in the Stay Fresh Canister. It's Late Night with David Letterman. Tonight, Elle McPherson, comedian Michael Davis, and columnist Bob Green. Also, viewer mail, and the regulator guy. And now, a living symbol of our once great railroads, much ladies and gentlemen welcome to the program my what a what a festive audience eh paul yeah are you excited about tonight's I'm in program a party kind of mood <laughs> i don't know i nights. uh i sense here and correct me if i'm wrong and i have a feeling this is the kind of group that will uh we have a lot of folks from out of town here don't we other parts of... yeah how many people from out of town? And, and, and you're here visiting on uh, vacation, spring break from uh, college and so forth, is that correct? Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. we're, we're, uh, we're happy to have you folks with us, and we're delighted you could uh, make time in your schedule to come and see the show. But, you know, sometimes tourists, when they come to this city, they fall prey to unfortunate circumstances. So tonight I have here three tips, Paul, that I think are valid. I've observed these to be the kind of things you want to watch for in your role as a tourist in this great city of ours. These are three things. That's right. Three things to watch for when you come to visit New York. That's right, exactly. Thank you very much, Paul. <laughs> okay. Say you're walking down any street here in Manhattan and a gang of young toughs grabs you and throws you into an alley and one of them pulls out a switchblade and holds it up to your neck. Here's what you do. Look him right in the eyes and say the following. Those things are illegal, you know. Okay, that's number one. Number two, cab drivers, I repeat, cab drivers are not allowed to charge extra if they whistle, sing, or do impressions during the trip. Those things are illegal, you know. And number three, on subways, when you ride the subways, please, I can't overemphasize this, avoid making eye contact with naked people, okay? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my musical conductor for the last 35 years, Mr. Paul Schaefer. Paul Schaefer. Thank you. Thank you so very, very much. David, we're grooving over here. We're kind of, I feel we're like the Playboy All-Stars over here. Uh -huh. We got, because uh, we got Mr. Steve Kahn with us. Steve, uh, nice to have you back tonight. Thanks for being here. The great jazz guitarist. Uh, over on drums, a cat who has been with us all week and doing what I think has been a, a fabulous kind of knockoff job on the drums. How about it for Mr. Anton Fig? Anton, nice to see you. Thank you for being here. And of course, just back from L.A. where we picked up uh, one of those Grammys in the category of what? Jazz slash fusion. Oh! He's back with us. How about it for Mr. David Sanborn? The best David. saxophone player of the world. And uh, let's not forget the, the great Will Lee on the bass guitar. Thank you, gentlemen. 
rounding out a kind of a Playboy All-Star. Let me ask fan. you a question, Paul. Who is this guy over there in the tie? The guy in the red Ooh, tie. Yeah, who is this guy? Uh, that's my accountant. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, who are you? I don't know what, who are you he is. what are you doing here? What is your name? My name? Yeah. My name's Jim. Jim, what do you do for a living? I uh, I work for a living. Now, who do you work for? Why are you standing over there? Where, where would you like me to? Well, what do you do? Who is this guy? <laughs> no, serious. Who is this guy? <laughs> no, what are you what are you doing here, Jim? There's no light on me. No, well that's alright. What do you do? No light on me. <laughs> what what do you do here? I think you may be in the business. No, no just tell me what you do. What do you do? What, for a living? Yes, for a living! <laughs> I work. I work for a magazine. For, for which magazine? For uh, Sports Illustrated. And you're gonna have no, Alan. come on. You can't stand there. Get out of there. Come here. Come on. Come on. No, come on. No, get him out of here. Here, let's get him on, a, on an elevator. Where are you from? Are you really with those <laughs> Here, give me an elevator. Somebody stay until the elevator comes. Here. Here. No, no, you stay right there. You stay right there and get on the first elevator. the deal you just you can't let these dead beats in here like this Damn no 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 don't don't let him in here he's who is coming he? back don't let bob get out there and rough him up get him out you try you try to put on a little show and then a guy shows up in a suit no don't bring him in here don't <laughs> Whew. ladies and gentlemen i'm sorry you had to see that don't now where is he there he comes oh wait a minute hold on oh, wait. Well, wait a minute maybe i was too hasty <laughs> well, he, uh, he didn't explain it like that, you see, I, uh... <laughs> oh, oh, well. Have we got time to do this? Oh, stop screaming in there! Uh, how are we doing? We re can we do this? Okay, all right, we gotta get right to it. This is our, uh, viewer mail. That was Jim. Jim. Uh, letter number one. You ready, Paul? Oh, by the way, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to demonstrate to you the concept of the pyramid of comedy with pyramid. the help of our, uh, our friend here and stage manager, Mr. Biff Henderson. Letter... Letter number one. Thank you very much, Biff. We, we show you now how we build this jumbo pyramid of comedy every Thursday night. Uh, dear Dave, what's the deal with Harper, Kansas? Roger Abrams from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, well, Roger, same as all our deals. Volume, volume, volume. I can't get over that weasel thinking he could just stand there for the rest of the show. Cat from Sports Illustrated, hanging out with the band. Go ahead, will you... Letter go? number two. <laughs> Pyramid of Con. <laughs> A little short guy in a cheap suit and a tie thinks he can just stand right over there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, dear Dave, have you ever considered recording Barbara Gaines' voice back and then playing it back at uh, lower speeds? Uh, doing this might be fun. Barbara is the woman you hear from time to time uh, shrieking back there like a rabid squirrel. Uh, Barbara, wh what do you think about this? Okay, how did, did you get that recorded? Okay, play it back at really slow speed now. Who loves you, baby? Number three. Uh, dear Dave, how does Pat Sajak on Wheel of Fortune get his audience to ooh and ah so much? P.S. The A is silent in my last name. A loyal fan, Kimberly Wright, bless Richmond, Virginia. Oh, I see you don't pronounce the A in her last name. Uh, Kimberly, you know, I, I can't really speak for uh, the Wheel of Fortune, but I'll show you here how we get our audience to ooh and ah. Folks, did you realize that the A in this woman's last name is silent? Okay. Uh, 
Letter number four. Dear Dave, is Tommy in charge of anything but making sure you have fresh water in your cup? Deeply concerned, Eric Pakula and uh, Phil Ross, Roseburg, Oregon. Uh, this is a good question, you know, but I, I think it should be answered by Tommy Casabona himself. Tommy, uh, answer this question about filling up the cup there, if you don't mind. As a matter of fact, you little pucks, I don't actually fill Mr. Letterman's cup with water. Mug maintenance is a two-man job. I'm in charge of storing, cleaning, caring for the cup. My friend Jimmy here handles the water. That's right, Tommy. Which means it's my responsibility to obtain and transport the water for Mr. Letterman. Several times a night. Usually with only a moment's notice. <laughs> Sometimes when the pressure's really on, I wish I had Tommy's job. Oh, yeah, like I'm having a real picnic over here. <laughs> Any way you look at it, it's Eric and Phil. It's not a job for amateurs. You boys stick to writing letters to TV shows. Now, that's something that takes two guys to do. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, gentlemen. Letter, letter number five. Thank you very much, Biff. Now, we've completed our uh, pyramid of comedy, haven't we? For the day. For, yes, for the day. <laughs> Yeah, the reason that guy sneaked in here is because you were in wardrobe putting that hat on. Isn't that the truth? That's right. Wait, well, don't let him back in here. No way. All right, then a fine job. Nice going, Biff. Thank you, Dave. Letter number five. Was that it? We're, we're up to number five now? Letter number five. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. We're up to letter number five. Here we go. Dear Dave, how about giving some members of the band, not including Paul... It says, parenthetically here, some attention to, hopefully, waiting John Sibley, Fairfield, Connecticut. Tr uh, let's see. Uh, John, you know, uh, gee, you know, uh, maybe I haven't really uh, given the, the rest of the members of the band enough of my time. You know, I always chat here with Paul oh, Dave. Show, but I don't know no. if I've spent enough time with Steve no, and Bill and Anton and... David, I, I yes, don't... Paul. I don't... Uh, I, uh, I don't think anybody could accuse you of not giving attention to these boys. You know, it was just this very afternoon here in the in the studio I I can remember it so clearly and it's funny that I gotta say, it's not easy hosting a show and being both a father and a mother to these, to Thank these you very boys. Much, and personally, Paul, I, I appreciate those kind words. I think you do. It's just a fine, fine. Thank you. Show. We have a, uh, we got a fine, fine show here for you tonight. Gosh, we have that uh, beautiful woman that was uh, with that little weasel. What was his name? Jim. Uh, comedian Michael Davis is here. Bob Green and uh, what else? Oh, all kind of other stuff. So we'll do a commercial. Then we'll begin the show. Come on back, folks. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>